Hello, how are you? My name is Yu Chen. Welcome to another video of Printing Matter. Um, this video will be posted during PMVABF, that is Printing Matters Virtual Art Book Fair, a continuation of Printing Matters Art Book Fair that happened every September in New York since 2005, every February in Los Angeles since 2013. Um, this year, the book fair will be happening nowhere and everywhere, that is here on the internet. Um, this video series was initiated under the same circumstance and for the same purpose, that is to continue our mission, the dissemination, um, appreciation and understanding of artists' books in shifted um, reality. I do, of course, like everyone else, miss the chemical exchange that could only happen face to face. Um, but I'm also grateful to the many perks brought to us by this new format. For one, our service is no longer bound by our geographical location. What we are offering is available everywhere and potentially forever. Um, so with that in mind, Today we will be thinking about the sculpturality of artist books, if that's a word. Um, in the past, I have described the artistic practice of publishing as a spectrum. On one end, it's $1, $5 zine, um, economically produced, democratically distributed, while the other end being something more intricate in the making and therefore more precious and uh, exclusive, prone to be fetishized. Um, today, I want to shift the perspective and depart from this dualism, this separation, and argue that the conceptual and the material aspects of a artist's book can brace each other, enrage each other, and even become each other, instead of being um, um, opposing, opposing entities. Um, hence the title, Every Book is a Sculpture, because they are. Um, I have some proofs from Printed Matters Inventory. Um, their prices range from high to low, their edition size range from small to large, but in one way or another they speak with their form, um, as sculpture is supposed to do. Um, they communicate to us through their physical um, properties, including scale, depth, layer, texture, um, opacity, porosity, and more. Um, we will start with scale. This one here. Um, Irma Boom, the architecture of the book, books in reverse chronological order, 2013 to 1986, with comments here and there. Um, this is a overview of Irma uh, Boom's celebrated career as a book designer who mostly worked on commission but nevertheless um, expresses incredible autonomy and bold experimentations um, on what a book can be. Her design decisions, instead of driven by the visual effect, are very often a result of certain underlying logic based on her understanding of the client's content. For example, in this book on Chanel Number no. Five's perfume, she used the technique of embossing and debossing, but without ink. Um, the whole book has no ink to mimic, to echo the way that perfume manifests itself that is invisible and ghostly. Um, this catalog, this uh, retrospective that she designed for herself is, as you can see, endearingly tiny. Uh, such scale was derived from the fact that she always makes mini books in the process of design just as 
architects will make models to help them to envision their buildings. Um, since this is a book about her work, it seems to me logical that the scale of this book reflects how she works, how she designs. Um, this is a reprint published in 2015. Uh, it's 800 pages, while the first edition, which uh, we don't have, was 700 pages, published in 2010. So as she is still actively producing, um, this catalog would grow in volume and size uh, 3% each year, uh, each print run. Um, in the future. So the scale of this project is also an indicator of time. Um, next physical feature that speaks is depths. This is A Field Guide to Weed by Kim Beck. Um, it is a flip book. Um, maybe in the future we can make a video titled Every Book is a Film and we can talk about the timeline of flip book. But today I want to focus on these steps right here in between the left and right pages. Um, a physical feature that is shared by most binding styles and very often undesirable as it makes part of the page pages hard to see. But in this case, in this book, the artist utilized this steps as a metaphor for a crack on the wall or on a city sidewalk where grass would naturally grow and gradually take over. Mm. Um, another book that utilized the same property is this one titled In Between by Taiwanese artist Chen Yixuan. I will show you some pages first. So this undesirable um, inaccessibility of such depths right here it's being used in a rather humorous way, I think, in this book, as most of the key information of most photos are purposefully positioned at this gutter and hence um, unavailable. Here I quote the artist. Um, as a result of not being able to see, I was able to keep the true memories in literally the middle of the book the deepest spot in my memory. Mm. Um. Mm. Um, next physical feature is layer. This is Blue Eye Come by Dan Wash, published by Printed Matter. Um, the artist took the iconic logo of the uh, TV production company Columbia Pictures. But instead of the goddess holding the torch, he took the background, the romanticism, dramatic sky and cloud, which he then processed into halftone um, images. And this book is constructed by two variances, um, color and size. So from layer to layer, as the color gets darker, the size of the pages gets smaller. And the second half of the book in reversed sequence. Mm. If you lay the book open like this, um, the pages spread out shoots out as rays of light, referring back to the image of um, skylight. Another example of layer, N-site published by Ori Studio based in Beijing. 
Um, I'll show you some pages first. So it's a collective project. Each layer, each page um, hosts one thought that's contributed by one um, artist or designer or architect. While the shape of this layer corresponds to the characteristics of the contributor. Um, just as the shape of a house corresponds to the characteristics of the inhabitor. And together, 10 different houses um, bound together constitute this village of different thoughts. So layer, in this case, is being used to distinguish individual identities of each collaborator and visualize the unique way of thinking of each collaborator as well. Mm. Next, uh, sculptural quality is texture. Um, so unlike a painting or a sculpture or <laughs> or um, any other traditional art form which do not really encourage us to touch them. With a book, you have to hold it and flip it with your hand. Um, such bodily interaction is demanded by this art form. You can imagine that there is actually a parallel conversation happening between your fingers and the pages while your eyes scanning for texts and images. Um, Hence, texture a language. Um, in this case, this book by um, Oscar Manzo, uh, titled Karma, where the artist captured or stole um, the private and unguarded moment of people in their cars. Um, I think in this case, this extremely glossy surface, this paper choice, um, on the one hand, echoes the flawless uh, industrial aesthetics of car culture. On the other hand, amplifies this um, aggressive and almost repulsive um, clarity and high contrast of overexposure of intrusion and um, violation. Mm. Another artist book that utilizes texture is this one titled Reminiscences by Yunus Mekas, um, a filmmaker, film critic, and poet who actually had an event here in 2019 in Pune Matter, not long before he passed away um, at the age of 93. Um, Yunus Mekas is an artist who I always wanted to know more but never did. Until the preparation of this video, my lovely co-worker Anna suggested this book to me and I happened to have a friend, Lucas, who's a Yunus Mekas um, expert. So thank you both. Um, it has been very nurturing learning about his trajectory. Um, a very brief bio, which I think is necessary um, for us to locate this project in the ecology of his um, life and work. Uh, Yunus Mekas left his hometown in Lithuania during World War II to escape the um, Soviet Union army and was imprisoned in multiple labor camps in Europe until he made his way um, to New York where he stayed and worked and became a renowned avant-garde artist. One of his legacy is Anthology Film Archive in East Village, New York, which I've been missing a lot since COVID. Um, Yunus Mek has visited Lithuania in 1971 with the footage he took uh, during this trip. He made a film and a book. The book was published by Fluxus, 
uh, designed by George Masunas. Um, I'll show you some pages first. So images of rural landscapes. Some images seems to be the reproduction of old photos with poetry laid on top, um, written in Lusania, which I unfortunately can read. And the front and back cover of this book, as you can see, are made of wooden blocks, while the front cover has two brace hinges on it. Um, although I can't read the poems, but I think I can read the cover. I can read this texture. Um, as a fellow diasporatic being, I read it as a gate. Um, outside of the gate, his new life, new identity that he invented um, on the new land. And inside of the gate, hometown, childhood, lost paradise. Um, nostalgic sentiments, of course, expresses longing but also proves um, distance and disconnection. Here's what he said about the film um, of the same title. You see the old house, my mother, all the brothers, goofing, celebrating our homecoming. You don't really see how Luciania is today. You see it only through the memories of a displaced person back home for the first time in 25 years. So in this case, <coughs> this material choice, this texture, structure, um, constructs for us a entryway as well as a barricade, as the idea and the experience of homecoming is a dialectical one. Um, next two books. Uh, while I was preparing for this video, I asked myself and people around me what a sculpture is. And the consensus of this very casual survey is that a sculpture is a thing in itself, a self-enclosed entity. Um, contrary to what a book is supposed to be, but here are two books that are enclosed whose content are opaque to us. Um, this one is by artist Klaus Schorubel, um, and it's inspired by the French poet Stephen Malachmé, who envisioned a book that would uh, reveal nothing short of all existing relations between everything. Um, and this grand fantasy a um, hundred and something later, a hundred something years later, was realized by um, artist Klaus Schorbel by a piece of styrofoam and a jacket. Um, it's titled the book as Malame titled it, um, published by Printed Matter in 2004. It has an ISBN on it. Um, this one is titled Boundless by artist David Stairs. It's a 360 degree spiral bound book. Um, I have sold many copies of this in my seven years career as a retail person here in Printed Matter, but I still don't know what's in it or if any. Um, contrary to opacity, some book speaks with porosity. Um, this titled Absence is by artist Jenny Mei Ji Yun, um, also published by Printed Matter. It was originally a design for, um, as a memorial for the War Trade Center, for the Twin Tower. Um, unlike most memorials that are made of cement or steel that are big and site specific. This one is made of paper and it's a book and it's portable and it has a rather intimate scale in proportion to human body. Um, and instead of text or images of the event, this book speaks with its shape. Um, or to be more precise, the the negative shape, what's missing from the shape, 
two identical squares die cut into each uh, of the 120 pages. Each represents a floor of the tower, um, including the antenna mast. Um, while the end reveals a floor plan. Um, I think negative shape absence communicates loss and grief, um, even though not on a linguistic level, but nevertheless clearly and effectively. Um, last sculptural vocabulary that I will reappropriate to talk about um, artist books is ready-made. Um, so ready-made is a um, term, a rangra, and really a state of mind that was coined by Marcel Duchamp in early 20th century. While the most famous piece um, of such genre being his um, fountain, that is a funeral. So he did not make this object. Um, it's ready-made. He simply put it in exhibition space and titled it. And in doing so, repurposed and recontextualized this everyday object. And in doing so, challenged the sacred uh, status of art and art institutions, or the holy border between art and everyday life. Um, however, such challenge, such act of rebellion has long been canonized itself. Um, it is the new secret of art history um, for quite a while now. And this one in my hand is uh, titled Holy Bible by David Hamas, where he took a catalog of Marcel Duchamp, published in 1997, and rebound it with leather cover, with gilt edging, with gold tooling, with a ribbon placeholder, and a slipcase as well, to resemble a Bible. Um, there's more labor involved here than what Marcel Duchamp did to the urinal. Um, but the main body of the book, the content, is ready-made, um, is the original catalog. All the labors that David Hamas added on are devoted to the periphery of a book, to the binding, to the ornament, to the craft. And through this periphery um, signifier, um, David Hamas repurposed recontextualized and reappropriated this um, catalog. Um, this beautifully cunning and ambivalent um, piece with many layers of reference and self-reference uh, was referred to me by our um, bibliographer Leslie. When I asked her, um, can she recommend any book that's heavy? which is another um, physical property that um, carries a lot of weight, both um, literally and metaphorically. So um, that's all the books that I want to show you today. Um, it feels bitter and sweet to talk about the physicality, the textile, um, experience of artist books while having a book fair online. Um, but I hope even through screen that their physicality, their materiality could communicate to you. Um, and I apologize for all the names and titles that I uh, pronounced wrong. You can find a complete bibliographical information on Printed Matters YouTube channel. 
in the description part of this video. Um, thank you for spending this time with me. Maybe I'll see you again. Take care.